Hey guys, welcome back to Range of Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew. Now what I have for you today is a look at 10 different, more advanced bushcraft and survival skills. We're going to take our basic tool set, knife, axe, saw, and some cordage, and then construct things using natural materials from around our area to provide for our most basic survival needs. Now this video is going to be slightly different from my usual videos in that I'm not going to narrate. This is going to be a silent video except for some small intros for each survival skill. Reason being is that it is deer season and I hunt early in the morning, I hunt late in the evening, and then I do these survival skills and videos all throughout the day and so I'm burning the candle at both ends and right in the middle. So I want to get this video out in time for you guys to enjoy so it's going to be low narration high skill and demonstration. So sit back, relax, enjoy the video, and make sure you like and subscribe. Thanks. One of the easiest tools to create that will make our lives a lot easier, especially in bushcraft and survival, is just a simple maul or mallet and wedges. We can take our saw, harvest the material selected off the landscape, use that same saw to create a stop cut, and then using our hatchet and our knife along with the baton taken from the landscape, baton away the material around which our handle will form. Once we have our handle formed, we can take larger sections of that baton material and then carve them down into wedges. And now we have a maul or a mallet and wedges to be used to pry things, hammer things, and create other tools for bushcraft and survival. A fun project, but also a good survival and bushcraft tool to help make rope that is viable for survival and bushcraft is a simple project called a rope spinner. We can take a large section of material, create a round notch around one end, cut off that end to make a handle, split our other end, and then carve away saddle notches, put it all together until it spins freely lash it together and then we have a rope spinner. We take our cordage, in this case twine, attach it to our anchor point, walk it back the desired length, tie it back around and then take our rope spinner at that bite we formed with our twine and then simply spin that rope spinner until we have our cordage tight. Once we have it tight we can reattach it to our anchor point and create another bite this time and then spin it the opposite direction to get that cordage to bite in on itself creating larger and larger diameter cordage. It's only going to get a little bit shorter but once we have it to our desired length we've got cordage now that we can use in the field.
a task that we taught at the advanced survival course I recently helped instruct at was recreating a folding saw or a simple saw, hand saw tool out in the field given only a blade. In this case, we can take our sawzall blade or we can take a blade from a folding saw if we happen to damage the handle for whatever reason and we can carve away material to create a handle, a simple hand's length of material that will fit nicely in the hand, split down the middle will be our frame. We fix our saw blade and then we can take our cordage, our bank line, creating a round lash, clove hitch at the top. We can wrap that cordage around the handle until we finish off with a clove hitch at the opposite end, creating that round lash. And now we have a handsaw tool that we can carry with us, assemble and disassemble quickly, use the cordage for other things if we're not using our saw, but we can still take down material and process it for bushcraft and survival. For firecraft, the pump drill is a more advanced option because it requires woodcraft skills in carving and understanding materials as well as friction fire proficiency to get a fire going. This is going to take a lot less effort but a lot more time to get that friction fire going. The pump drill is made out of a post with a chuck split twice. At the bottom end, we insert a piece of soft wood, which is our spindle, into that chuck and whip it in place to keep it in place. And then we have a weight in the form of a log split down the middle and carved out with saddle notches to fix to the post. We lash that together to create the weight sitting right above our final whipping above our chuck and our spindle. And then at the top of our post, we have a hole drilled with a piece of cordage through that in which we fit a paddle over top, the paddle is going to be a flat section of material that we're going to use as the pumping mechanism. It's going to have a hole in the middle that's going to fit over that post so we can pump freely. Once we have our set complete, we have our hearth and our catch and we're ready to go. The pump drill takes a while to get going. It's important to go slow, keeping and maintaining a decent pace until that notch is full and it starts to burp out a lot of that sawdust and a lot of the dust that we've created in that notch. Once we have that notch full and it starts to spit out that dust even more, we can go for broke and increase the speed and pressure in which we have our pump drill in action. And then once it smokes freely by itself, we stop, remove the pump drill, tap the ember free, and we have our fire starter right there. Apply that ember to a tinder bundle, blow it into flame, and we've got fire.
The earliest known nets to have been discovered are dated back to 8300 BC in northwest Russia. This net was found at the bottom of what was a lake and is now simply clay, along with bobbers and floats and other fishing equipment and tackle used by primitive man almost 10,000 years ago. But with basic knowledge and skill, we can recreate nets using our own modern-day cordage, in this case a utility net made out of parachute cord. We can use a reef knot or a square knot to create the mesh size and gauge that we want easily. And then once we're complete, tie off the net and we have our complete net. Use that utility net for carrying things back to camp or in this case around our pack frame to contain our gear. The Apache match is another more advanced bushcraft and survival skill, being that we have to have the materials for it and then we have to be able to assemble it as well as maintain it as we travel over time. The Apache match is designed to carry fire over distance and then apply burning ember to another tinder bundle to get a fire going at another campsite. But with bark, green or moist grass, punk wood and coals from our fire that are out, we can simply pile the material on top and roll it together like a burrito or a tinder bundle as it's referred to in the Sears survival manual and then lash that material together with parachute cord or our quarters that we've made. Take a burning ember from our fire or take the charred cattail that we've made, ignite it, apply it to the top of our Apache match, blow on it until the other coals are lit inside and we have smoke freely escaping from our Apache match and we're good to go and we can transport it over distance to apply to another fire in the future. Making ready-made tinder that can take a very small spark that we can apply to a tinder bundle and blow into flame to get fire is a more advanced bushcraft and survival firecraft skill. In this case, we're going to take a cattail and place it into our metal container, seal it off, and place it in our fire to char that material, and that cattail will then become our tinder. We can of course char cotton, we can char punk wood, but if you're in a swamp environment or a marshy environment like the one I'm in, cattails are excellent for creating tinder. Once it's charred, take it out, test a piece of it to make sure it works, and then we have our tinder ready to go.
advanced survival and bushcraft is all about thinking outside the box and working with what you have. Out in the wild, containers for water especially are going to be at a premium. One way we can create a hasty, temporary water container is by creating a bush cup. We harvest the material selected with our saw, split it four ways with our four sections, create a stop cut at the bottom of what will be the cup on the inside material. We baton away the center, assemble the four pieces, lash them together, and now we have our bush cup. To complete this bush cup, we take it, lash it, and stake it out along the bank of a creek or water source and throw that cup out in the water to allow the wood to swell from the water. Once it's swelled, we pull that out. We can contain some water and use it to pour into other containers or carry back to camp. Advanced bushcraft and survival doesn't mean that we have to be roughing it. We can be smoothing it, as some people say. One thing we can do is always carry a smaller extra wool blanket with us, not only for cover and for ourselves, but to recreate a nice area to sleep in using debris. We can create a simple browse bed using our USGI green wool blanket, filling it with debris and sewing off the ends to create a simple mattress or browse bed that we can lay on and stay warm from the ground and avoid losing heat through conduction to the ground while we sleep through the night. Advanced bushcraft and survival skills mean recreating signals from the landscape, especially when we are without a robust signaling kit. We should always have a signaling kit, but if we don't, we should be able to recreate signals for search and rescue to see from the landscape, one of which is going to be a tripod smoke generator or an upraised smoke generator. We create a tripod, lash it together, create a shelf halfway down, we gather our fire material, place it on top of our shelf. This fire needs to be able to light in a single go and it needs to be ready and waterproof. To waterproof it, we gather green material, put it over top of the entire tripod so that our fire lay is protected. When search and rescue comes over the horizon or we hear that chopper coming, we get into our fire lay with our fire starting device, light our fire so that it is lit and will burn without any added attention. It will ignite and start to burn that green material, which will create smoke. The Venturi effect from the updraft of the air beneath the tripod, since it's upraised off the ground, will get that smoke going up above the tree canopy to alert search and rescue and hopefully get us out.
All right, guys, that does it for this video. 10 different advanced bushcraft and survival skills. I really hope you like this video. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I want to thank you guys for everything you do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.